Good morning. My name is uh, Tom Sturbins, and I, I came to Van War in 1981, a long, long time ago. I didn't plan to be a pastor. Uh, I came to be the pastor of the Jumper Church. I, started, I soon found out that I attended several people in the Jumper Church. After Miss Rowena uh, pointed out here one day, and said, oh, he's the pastor of the Jumper Church. And so I thought it was great. I found there to be a massive uh, separation from reality since in the years I was here, no one ever jumped. So I don't know, I don't know why we sustain that name. But I got back here coming through the years. Um, those of you who don't know, but uh, our family has a, a home here. And, and this was a life-changing moment in um, 1981 for me. I had previously been in the Marine Corps and the Special Ops thing. And, then I was a cop for four years, and Brenda and I had been married two years, no children and uh, no debt, and they needed somebody to be a pastor. I had no ambition or desire or experience or training to be a pastor, yet these precious people here gave me the chance to do that. I really thought I would come for about six months and pretend I could pretend that long and then they would send a real pastor, I'd go back and get on with my life. And 38 years later, the joke is sort of on me. Here I still am doing the pastoring thing. So this uh, coming to this uh, island was life-changing. And, and you are family and influenced my life in ways that I can't imagine. Upon returning here, it was delightful. The first, I'm going to find out that after offering Miss Aurelia a ride, she refused the ride, then walked over and said, who is that old man that just offered me the ride? <laughs> that was okay. I went unscarred and unscathed by that, and only to find out uh, later I drove by, and Andy said, who is that old man that just drove by? <laughs> Which I found fascinating since while I'm aware I'm old, I am absolutely certain he looks and is well beyond me. So um, I don't know what he is. If I'm old, I don't know what he is. And I know he can't hear me, so I can say anything I want. <laughs> the, um, in, in getting to talk to you guys this morning, it is the, the absolute joy of my heart. And um, uh, the first sermon I ever preached here had 13 pages of notes, and I was done in 14 minutes. <laughs> I know you're wishing that I will keep that. I'll do my best to keep that same time frame. I don't have that many notes. There are a couple of things that I just wanted to encourage you with. First of all, uh, you may not know this, but we think we sing to God, and we do sing to God. But both in the book of Ephesians and Colossians, the Bible says to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So you need to inform the person next to you that says that. Okay? We engage the spirit, but we sing and we speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So I want you to go ahead and do this right now. Turn to the person next to you and say, you may not know it, but all of my singing was a blessing to you. So receive it. Go ahead and tell them. <laughs> I know whoever might be standing or sitting next to Roy Russell find that impossible to be true. Because I've heard him but uh, nonetheless, it, the Bible says that it's a joyful noise and it counts for something. Psalm 19 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, you can probably finish it, be acceptable on your side. Yeah? I like the one translation that says, God, my rock and my redeemer. I say this verse, quote it, pray it at about every gathering, whether it's a meeting with people or standing in front of people, singing, preaching, whatever I'm doing. There's two words there that are unique, and I pray that in the next few minutes it will be true of our gathering here. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, that first word, rock, is just a place of sure footing. The second word, redeemer, I love that because if a, in the United States of America, there are coupons. You can get a coupon for Walmart and get $2 off on something. But it's only good at Walmart. And you can take it there, and in that coupon, that piece of paper, it has intrinsic value. It's worth whatever it says on the front of that paper. That's the only place that you can take it. I've often pondered the fact that uh, 
that human institutions seek to offer redemption without the necessity of a redeemer. But I always have the joy of announcing that we know where Walmart is, and I'm not talking about Walmart, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. That we have a place where we can go, and that intrinsic value, as God's Word says, that we were created in His image. At the inception of humanity, God said, I'm going to stamp something on the image of humanity, that if you will come to me, very much like a coupon, I can bring the full value out of who you are. So it's my prayer as we come to God's Word in the next few minutes that we'll leave here by reason of our song and the Word of God that's shared that somehow in some mysterious and imponderable way that we will leave with a sense of sure footing, we can't quite say why, and a sense of promise for tomorrow because that's what redemption says. They said there's something in tomorrow, something in your life and my life that God is going to bring out. Uh, this morning as I went, uh, last night and early this morning, went over several passages of, of Scripture and really just pray, you know, Lord, what would you have here today? And here's the thing I believe. And I've always believed that we serve this timeless, spaceless being we call Jehovah God, who by any other definition is alien. He lives, he lives outside time and space. We treat him sort of like uh, Siri or Google, 